I'd like to call to order the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of Carroll County, Maryland for March 19th, 2024. Uh, let's uh, establish a quorum, please, Janice. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Kirkner. Mr. Lester. Here. Mr. Hoff. Mr. Kane. Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Robertson? Here. Mr. Soison? Here. Commissioner Gordon? And Secretary Daly? Here. All right. Vice Chair, please let the record reflect that five members are present and we do have a quorum. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, has everybody had a chance to uh, review the uh, agenda for today? Any changes, updates? I have just one very minor change okay. on item number nine, Westminster annexation number 77. Yeah. That number is um, incorrect. It should be number 79. 79. Okay. We'll make those changes in the notes. All right. Thank you, Daphne. Any other changes, updates? Okay. Let me get a motion. Move we approve the agenda uh, with the one. Uh, minor revision. Second. All right. Thank you. Uh, the minutes for the tw February 20th meeting were distributed uh, earlier. Um, any changes uh, to the minutes of the 20th, meeting on the 20th? I move we approve the minutes to the uh, meeting of, from the 20th. Second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, commission reports. Janice is uh, traveling, so she's not here today. Uh, one report for the chair is uh, she approved the um, Schwartz Beck property. When did she do that? On, uh, the, she approved the uh, preliminary plan of subdivision pursuant to 155 and uh, approve the final plan of subdivision pursuant to 155 uh, for the Schwartzbeck property. Um, where's the case <clears throat> number here? M220103. Uh, Janice approved that on March 15th, 2024. That's it for the chair. Tom's not here. Any other uh, commission re member reports? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Moving to item seven, administrative reports. Daphne? I do not have any administrative matters to cover. Okay. Any extensions? Yes. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Florida Good morning. Bureau of Development Review. We have two extensions since our last meeting. The first is a subdivision. It's called Abbott Acres. So they extended that preliminary approval. This is the 14th extension for this project. It's a 10 lot subdivision in Commissioner District 2. And their current um, communication and letter does indicate that they are working with an engineering firm to complete their final plans, which is their next phase. So it seems like there's forward progress, but they weren't quite sure where they're going with it for a while. And now it looks like they are going. Did you say so, 14? 14th, yes, I did say That's that. That's 2010? Is that 2010 or? Uh, it's a P02029 project. So it started all the way back in 02, worked its way through concept preliminary, and now they're looking to move into their final phase. So. Okay. Um, the second is a site plan, S15005. It's Crossroads Vehicle Repair Shop. This is the fifth extension for this project, also in Commissioner District 2. 
that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any uh, BZA cases to note? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. For the March of for the month of March, there was two BZA cases. The first case was six four nine three. This case was for an applicant requesting a conditional use and variance for a contractor's equipment storage yard on a property located at three four zero nine Pine Circle South in the Westminster area. This property is zoned AG and is 2.87 acres approximately, and planning staff found that this conditional use and variance was consistent with the 2014 master plan um, and would not have an adverse effect on the current use of the property or its surrounding area. And the second case was 6494. This request was for on um, a above ground petroleum products storage. Um, of 2,000 gallons or greater on a property in Silver Run located off of Littleson Road. Um, and this property is zoned mostly I-2, heavy industrial. And planning staff found that this conditional use and variance was also consistent with the 2014 master plan. Um, and both of these cases are said to be heard on March 26 by the BZA. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Any other administrative matters or reports? Um, you might recall last month, Hannah Weber was here giving you a little bit of an update on the um, bills that are moving through the legislature. She's here again to give you a further update on um, how those are progressing. Okay. Yes. Hannah? Yep. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I passed out a sheet, a summary sheet of the bills that I will be presenting this morning. Um, Senate Bill 484, which is the Housing Expansion and Affordability Act. Um, I said last month that the amendments proposed by MAKO, um, there hasn't been any movement on this, as in it hasn't passed through the Senate yet. I expect it will with the amendments, but um, no update on that this month. Um, the next bill is Senate Bill 906, Conversion of Commercial Buildings for Residential Use. This was passed through the Senate. Um, in summary, it says by January 1, 2025, political subdivisions must inventory the number of vacant commercial buildings and develop a plan for converting those commercial buildings for a residential use. Another bill is House Bill 131, which is local reporting. This passed through the House. Uh, this, in summary, says jurisdictions must report information about building and development permit applications to the state, um, specifically when a development permit application includes residential housing components as part of the development. And this is something that will be most likely included in the annual report that you all see every year. So that's it for housing. Moving on to cannabis. The big one is House Bill 805, which is licensee lo locations restrictions. These amendments were passed through the House, establishing distance requirements that jurisdictions cannot exceed. Um, so a cannabis dispensary, grower, or processor must be 500 feet from a school, licensed childcare, playground, rec center, library, existing park, or church, and then 2,000 feet from another cannabis dispensary. Also some added language since um, my presentation on this last month is that this bill now includes language for protests of license renewals. So residents or tenants within 1,000 feet of a cannabis dispensary grower or processor may protest the renewal of a uh, license if they are found to be violating the regulations such as litter littering, vandalism, criminal activity, et cetera. And then the last one I presented last month was Senate Bill 399, which is pertaining to advertising of cannabis locations. And this was given an unfavorable report by the Finance Commission. Um, next month will most likely be the last month that I'll present this as uh, Sunny Die is April 8th. Um, so by then we'll have a lot more information on these. Okay. And from what I've been reading a lot more discussion about the cannabis uh, effect for the county and some there's some discussion or some opinions about 
should it just be the municipalities the county should be out of that deal or what you know so a lot more to come on that i'm sure mm -hmm. and i'm sure uh senate bill 484 okay thank you yep. okay uh, moving along to uh item number eight the hampstead annexation number 45 the stag property and hannah yes that is also me um hannah show today yeah. <laughs> with me today i have some representatives from the town of hampstead and the property owner stag, yeah. yep stag, yes. so if you guys want to introduce yourself good morning uh my name is jim rourke i'm the uh town manager for the town of hampstead hi jim Good morning, Greg Rapisardo with Saul Ewing on behalf of STAG, their outside Good council. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, with that, I'll get started on my informational briefing. So here is the annexation plat that was submitted to the county. Um, this annexation area is approximately 51 acres adjacent to the corporate limits of Hampstead. Um, we are basically on the corner of Huxville Road and the CSX Railroad. Here we are um, in relation to the corporate limits of Hampstead. You can see we're on the southern end. And this map on the right is kind of a zoom in of the property. You can see we are adjacent to the corporate limits. And then you can see by this gold and black boundary that we are inside the municipal growth area. As I said earlier, this um, annexation area is approximately 51 acres. It is currently the site of the Penguin Random House Distribution Center. The property is currently zoned I-1 industrial with the county. The request is to be zoned IR, restricted industrial, in the town of Hampstead. Because the uses are, are similar in intensity with the county's I-1 and Hampstead's IR zoning district, there's no zoning waiver required for this annexation, so the town did not request a zoning waiver. The property is designated as restricted industrial in the 2010 Hampstead Community Comprehensive Plan, and the requested zoning of IR is consistent with this land use designation. The property is in the existing service category for both water and sewer. And as always, we send these annexation packets out for county agencies to comment on. We received a um, comment from Department of Economic Development where they provided comments of support for this annexation. And then the Bureau of Comprehensive Planning is recommending the town give public notice by posting the property prior to the date of public hearing, which would notify all adjoining property owners of the annexation. And then our next steps is to present this to the county commissioners this coming Thursday, March 21st. So since there is no zoning waiver required, this is just an informational briefing for you all to um, gather any comments that you may have, which we can report back to the commissioners on Thursday. And no motion required? Nope. By us. <coughs> Pardon me. Questions? Comments? Yes, sir. Nope. <laughs> Hearing none. Uh, seeing none, that was easy. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Item nine, the uh, Westminster annexation number 79, Cross Creek Enterprises. Um, Hannah, back to you. Yep. And with me, I have Andrew Gearhard, a planner from the city of Westminster. Hi, everybody. Hi, Andrew. Okay. Again, this is just an informational briefing for you all. Here is the annexation plat that was submitted by the city. Um, this property is approximately 0.4 acres, but the annexation area includes some acreage from Malcolm Drive. Here's an overview of the city of Westminster area. You can see this is where the annexation area is. In this zoom in, you can see um, the corporate limits of the city of Westminster. Um, you can't see the growth area boundary because it extends down here, but you can see by this map that we are inside the municipal growth area for the city of Westminster. Um, the total annexation area is approximately 0.69 acres. 
The property, this parcel here, is currently improved with a vacant commercial building. With the county, the property is currently zoned C2 commercial. <coughs> um, the requested zoning into the city of Westminster is B business. So because the uses and residential uses in the county C2 and the Westminster's business zoning district are similar, there is no zoning waiver required for this annexation. The designated land use for the property is commercial, um, and this is taken from the City of Westminster's 2009 Community Comprehensive Plan. The requested zoning of business is consistent with this land use. The property is in the existing service category for both water and sewer. And then we, of course, sent this out for agency comments. Uh, we received no comments back from any county agencies. We did receive this comment from the Maryland Department of Planning, where they originally recommended that the city of Westminster seek a zoning waiver from the county commissioners. But after looking, the county, county staff looked into this a little bit, and the county still feels that the city of Westminster should not request a zoning waiver due to the similarities in the C2 zoning district and the business zoning district. The main hang up with the Maryland Department of Planning is they saw that our C2 district doesn't allow for multifamily development, which is not true, we do. Um, so when we explained this to them, they agreed with the county's assessment that there is no zoning waiver required. And then as always, planning is recommending the city give public notice by posting the property prior to the date of the public hearing to notify all adjoining property owners. And then this will also be presented to the county commissioners this Thursday, March 21st. Okay, thank you. Any, um, anything every, further? I was just gonna say, um, <coughs> request for annexation came forward by the property owner they are doing some improvements to the building and putting in um, a new business. So um, as put forth in our water and sewer allocation policy, anybody who needs additional water who is um, eligible to annex must do so in order to get the um, increase in water. So um, that is why we're here today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments? Just, just one, I, the road. Mm -hmm. uh, is it Malcolm? Yeah. yeah. Drive. Drive. That's part of the annexation that yeah. the, the road is? Yes. So we've done that um, for various annexations. Um, State Highway doesn't care because it doesn't change ownership. Um, they don't care whose jurisdiction it's part of. Okay. Um, if you look at the town boundaries for the city of Westminster, we have, um, it, they are interesting. <laughs> um, so you will see like when we annex the Sheets property um, on 140, it did grow across 140. Um, for that purpose mm -hmm. and um, coming before you in the future will be another annexation that does uh, through a roadway as well. Okay. So the key is it doesn't change ownership, still maintained mm -hmm. by whoever was maintaining it and all that stuff. Yeah. Just a, a, a drawing on a map. Correct. Okay. All right. And um, a, a part of our transmittal to um, agencies for comment, we did send it to State Highway and they had no comments about this annexation. So. Nothing. 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 <clears throat> you guys are looking. You okay? <coughs> Good. Good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Well, this is like the the fastest uh, meeting. You're going to get a raise. History. Janice has some has a bar to clear now. <laughs> She's going to go away more often, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, any uh, general public comment? I guess if there, I should read this first in case there is, right? Um, speakers must sign in to make public comment, must talk into a microphone to facilitate audio and video recording. Comments will be strictly limited to three minutes per speaker. Citizen testimony is not a Q&A session. Questions may be directed to staff after the meeting. If any individual fails to comply with these rules, the Planning and Zoning Commission Chair may call the person out of order and may require him or her to leave the meeting. With that said, any uh, 
general public comments today. We're com you know, I missed the others. The, any comments about the annexations? None. Okay. Um, last item, adjournment. Make it a motion. I make a motion, we adjourn. A second. Second. We're adjourned. <laughs>